Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study. Our, our Father's Word, how fascinating it is. We come to this 12th chapter, and it absolutely anchors our Father's name. And it's important that you know those names as they were given in verse 2. The word translated English in, uh, to, into English from, in uppercase, Lord, the word Lord, is Yah in the Hebrew manuscripts. And Jehovah is Yahweh, Yahweh in the Hebrew tongue. Uh, it coming from the etymology of I am that I am, which is to say Iya Asha Iya in the Hebrew tongue, giving us that sacred name or the name our father said to call him. Now, naturally, there are different languages and different translations, but this was the voice in which he spoke. And the thing is, he said, draw water from the deep well. That means the well that runs still, but the living water, which is to say Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. In the next chapter, we're going to have a warning concerning Babylon. It's to Babylon of what God intends to do to her. That's, that's, it's both prophetic of the Babylon of the end times, which simply means confusion, as well as of old. And we'll pick up on that as we come to it. Chapter 12, verse 4, the word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name. And verse 4 reads, And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. That's hallelujah to, for Yah. Okay. Call upon his name, Yah. Okay. And Yahweh. Declare his doings among the people. That's not to say part of the people. That's to say all the people not just part, all of God's children, every race, every color, every creed, make mention that his name is exalted. And so it is, and as it goes. How precious our Father's word is, that he leaves no one out, whomsoever will. That is to say that we'll draw from that water, that will partake of that water from which you'll never thirst once you do. And to mention his name, yeah. And Yahweh, Emmanuel, God with us, which he has trained us well in this great book of Isaiah. Verse 5, sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. There's, no, there's nothing secret about it. It will be declared and shall be declared. We thank our Father that he has given this ministry a platform that goes around the world. And, and there are others. Verse 6, cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Where is he? It's important that you catch that. Don't you dare read over it. But he's in the midst of thee. He's wherever he wishes to be. And if you believe upon him and if you love him, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is in our midst. Always reminding one of the closing sentence in the great book of Ezekiel, Yahweh Shema, which is to say, Yah, our father was there. There we're with us. And so he is spiritually today whereby you have that influence, that overshadowing of the protector of all protectors. That's to say our Father. What, what a beautiful, short, brief, but complete chapter declaring his name and that you should always call upon him. Did he say, you whisper this around, you kind of get around? No, he said, shout it. Tell about it advertise it. There's hope, there's salvation, there's truth. And our Father loves his children, not just some of them, all of them that will believe upon him. Chapter 13, verse 1, and we change gears here, and we take a oracle of warning, titled, translated burden, but it's an oracle of warning, Father speaking. Chapter 13, verse 1, the burden of Babylon which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. In other words, our father showed this to him. It is true prophetically concerning the Babylon of the old times as well as that of today. Confusion. Two, 
Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. In other words, warn them, shout, holler, whatever you want to do. But this is still coming on Babylon. It's going to happen to confusion. And um, what is a banner you always raise? It's Christ, which is what? The word, the truth. And how, how does God intend to handle uh, Babylon? With Medio persia With Cyrus, whom he named before he was ever born. That um, he would conquer Babylon and bring in the reign of Cyrus. Verse 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones. Who is that? My election. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. And even them that rejoice in my highness. That's to say my elect. But also he called Cyrus. And he called the Persian. Verse 4. That's to say to take, to take care of that that is history now. Verse 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Uh, our Father controls it, and, and uh, this, this should remind you of uh, Revelation 13, when they all come against our Father, and then He overcomes. There's, there's no way that Babylon will not fall. She will. And what is the standard we fly? It's Christ, of course, that living water that we partake of. Verse 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. In futurist, you can see where this is going. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. What land? Babylon. Confusion. Father is not the author of confusion, but peace. If you do not attain peace of mind from studying his word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, something wrong. You're missing something. Because Father always holds to himself those that he loves. As he said in the sixth verse of the last chapter, I'm in the midst of thee. I'm there. I'm there for you to help you to hold you, to lead you, and to, uh, to see that you're successful when you shout out the truth. This is not to say to lose your credibility, but what he means is, is um, with zeal, bring forth the truth when the opportunity prevails. Verse 6, Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. There again, that day, what day? The Lord's day, the millennium, if you would. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Where does it come from? From the Almighty. El Shaddai is what it is in the Hebrew here. Not the sacred name mentioned in verse 2 of the last chapter, but that name El Shaddai, the protector of all which has both the breast and the womb involved within that name in the Hebrew, whereby you have the safest place and he that nourishes you to accomplish what it is that needs to be done. Verse 7. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. That is to say, those that, um, that go against God, those that try to protect confusion, those that try to protect Babel, verse 8, and they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. Uh, they shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. In other words, the embarrassment and the gleam that is upon their faces when they recognize the truth. How, you know, it is written in Revelation chapter 9 in the futurist sense when, when people realize that they thought they were good Christians but wake up to the fact that they've been worshiping Satan. 
they are so ashamed, so embarrassed, their faces glistening red, that they simply don't even want to face the true Christ. They want the mountains to fall on them because of the shame. They meant well. They thought they had listened to the preacher. Unfortunately, not one chosen by God and were deceived into worshiping the wrong Messiah. When Babylon falls, many will be disappointed and fall with her. But then the Lord's day is a beautiful day. What a father we serve, he that is in the midst of us. Verse 9, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel or, or stern, both with wrath and furious anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. That means those that, that uh, will not love him, will not worship him, the very Babel in itself, the states of confusion, it's going to be done away with. Well, how will that be possible? Well, first of all, Satan himself is locked in the abyss, the bottomless pit. And he will remain in that pit for that thousand year period. We're going to learn of it in the next chapter. We'll nail it with it in chapter 14, okay, of what we're talking about here. We're talking about the end times. And when he is incarcerated, that is to say, both body, soul, and spirit locked away from man, then man can begin to think on their own without the deception, without the cruelty, and see how loving our Father truly is that is in the midst of us. Uh, and God never harms those that he loves is simply to destroy that that deceives. Verse 10, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. That's yet future. Have you, did you, have you known of that happening? Do you know where it's written in another place? It's written in another place in the New Testament. You're not going to have it, but you're all familiar with it. For in Mark chapter 13, remember the sun, the moon, the stars, the constellation. Remember that. Chapter 13, the great book of Mark. And uh, for false Christ and false prophet shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect, even those set aside by God. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. When did he foretell us all things? In the prophecies, in the book of Isaiah. He told us how it was going to be. But in those days after that tribulation, here it comes, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then, and then only, shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. That would happen naturally in the generation of the fig tree. So, you see, there's nothing new under the sun. That documenting that we're talking here about the last day, the Lord's day, in other words, the last day before the Lord's day, when people, many will be deceived, but Babylon's going down the tubes and those that are deceived by the false one, which we'll get more detail in the next chapter, they're going, they're going to be disappointed, embarrassed, and realize they didn't make it. What You know, when you tried to be a Christian all your life and listened to somebody that did not teach God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, and were misled into worshiping a false Messiah, how embarrassing, how terrible. A wasted life. Verse 11, returning to uh, the 13th chapter of Isaiah. <clears throat> and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease. You're not going to have anything to be proud of. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. They're not going to have anything to be haughty about. Did he say anything that he would harm one that loves him? No. Those that are against him. 
Don't ever forget that. Verse 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the gold wedge of Ophir, the meaning abundance, and it's the finest gold that has ever been, purest on its own. In other words, a person, there's no gender within this, man or woman that will love the Father, he considers that more precious than anything in this world. He truly does. So if you love him and if you follow him and if you have eyes to see and ears to hear that he can utilize you as a called out one, wake up. Verse 13, therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his furious anger. And so it is. I want you to see the scope of that. Do you know that that's also written in the, in the New Testament? It's written in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 12. And it states there in that Hebrew, uh, book of Hebrews in chapter 12, um, See thou refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Do you know who that is? Messiah, Christ, our Father, also, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Everything. And this word, what this word, Isaiah, the book of Hebrews, this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made that, that um, those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And so it is. Wherefore, we receive, a, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Are you standing on that rock? That rock is Christ. That is the same as the water from that well that runs deep. Are you in him? Is he your standard? Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For God is a consuming fire. You know, our Father has all the patience in the world and how he loves those that love him. But there comes that day and that time he has spoken, he has warned, it's going to come to pass. He's going to shake the iniquity out of heaven. Do you know what that means? Satan and his fallen angels are cast out. Where do you think they come to? Earth. That's when he comes in his role as the false messiah. And then following that comes the great shaking. As a woman in travail, do you know what that means? It means the birth of a new age is upon us. So open your eyes and open your ears and hear the word of God. He that speaks from heaven talks to us through his word, through the letter he has written us. He didn't say whisper it. He said shout it. Make sure it's known. The very word of God. Okay, let's return to, to the 13th chapter of Isaiah and verse 14. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Uh, where? Out of Babylon. Going to re they're going to come out of confusion and go to their own people of truth. The real word of God, our real Father, Almighty God. 15, everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Um, and those that do not return to their own, those that would still stay ignorant, those that would still choose to disobey God, they're in bad shape. Okay, 16. Their children also, sh also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Now stay with me spiritually. This means with deception. When that false one comes, when those stars are cast from heaven and they're cast right out here on earth, 
many that are supposed to be the wife of Christ are going to go whoring after the false husband who claims to be Christ. It is written. It, it's written in that 13th chapter of Mark where he said, Behold, I foretold you all things. He said, They're going to deliver you up before the synagogue of Satan. There's a purpose in that. See that you're not deceived. That's what's important. You're not going to be. That's an impossibility. Why? Because you know the truth. Verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the means against them. And the Medes and the Persians. This is Cyrus, okay? This, this would be Iran of today, okay? Which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You couldn't bribe one of them. You couldn't put a reward out on one of them's head. It wouldn't mean anything to them. 18. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces of Babylon, of course. And they shall not have pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. That deception, they will spread it and they will not apologize for it and it will overflow. And do you know something? Those that are deceived are going to wallow in it. They're going to love it. Why? Because they're truly going to think Christ has returned. They're going to think 100% that they're doing the proper thing because of the deception. This is why it's written in that same book, Mark 13, chapter that we read from earlier, book and chapter, that mother will betray the daughter to death. Satan's death, okay, that's his name. And, and the father, the son. Why? Because they think what they're doing is right, is correct. And but by the grace of God, there go I. You know, deception rampant on the earth. What a shame. Verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans, all five dialects, excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be the same. Going, what a mess. Verse 20, and it shall never be habited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Why? Because we move into a new dispensa uh, dimension. Bab God will never allow Babylon to exist again. That's confusion. Why? Because he's returning as king of kings and lord of lords. There, he will not allow it to, to grow or prosper out, aside from a very short season at the end of the millennium. It's done. It's over. And then comes the eternity of love and understanding of togetherness with our Father. That's coming. Talk about glory. Talk about happiness. How, how about it? Whenever a wicked thing will be allowed there again. Never. Never. 21. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, of, and owl shall dwell there, and satyrs, that's demons in a sense, uh, shall dance there. Um, and verse 22. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant places and her time is near to come and her day shall not be prolonged. Babylon is going down. That is God's warning to Babylon. That is God's warning to anyone that would want to participate in her. Come out. Come out of confusion. Well, how do I do that? How do I come out of confusion? Study your father's letter chapter by chapter and verse by verse and listen to your father. You know, a beautiful thing, you just witnessed it. Our father does nothing except he forewarn. That entire chapter was to forewarn the enemy, I'm coming. 
And this is what I'm going to do to you. You'd better change. He had given that beautiful 12th chapter just prior to this inclusive of the sacred name and how blessed it is to follow it and how he would be in your midst rather than Satan if you would believe upon him. And then he, he thinks enough of all people that he, uh, in this 13th chapter, warns even the enemy of exactly how it's going down, what he's going to do to it. It is written, it shall come to pass exactly that way. I shored those prophecies up from the New Testament from Mark 13 and Hebrews chapter 12 whereby you could see and understand there's nothing new under the sun. It is written, it shall come to pass as it is written. Okay, chapter 14, basically, um, it has the restoration of Israel or how Israel rises. It's good news. But it also tells you who that wicked one was. Chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, that's the whole house, all 12 tribes, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined, that's the allies, with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They, they all shall, why? Because they'll all be blessed there. You can read of this even in the eternity in Revelation chapter 21, verses 20 through 24, where it says that the nations, that's to say the ethnos nations, Gentile nations, shall come to that house to be blessed and to love the Father. Verse 2, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. This means to teach, to lead, to share. Uh, to be taken captive by Almighty God is one of the most beautiful things in the world. To be a slave to Almighty God is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Being a slave to man here on earth is maybe not so nice. But being captive and a slave to Almighty God, yes, for the eternity, to be captivated by Him is a blessing, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. In other words, when God takes away sorrow, every tear, all pain, and he puts in his place the rewards of first fruits. It's double everything. God's election um, have a lot to be thankful for. Verse 4, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? How, how has it happened? We know. God puts a stop to it. In history, and, and what, what is history? History is to show you how it really goes down. It's examples. That's, those are called types. And God forenamed Cyrus to accomplish that, um, that uh, bit of history whereby you know here in the end times how it goes to pass. A proverb, Babylon's past history. How did she go down? Verse 5, the Lord, what now? The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. That's the lawless one, Satan, and the scepter of the rulers. He takes over. That's why confusion falls. That's why sorrow was taken away. God takes over. You know, man has always wanted to be king. And you get man, man can hardly help getting on an ego trip of his own, trying to rise past where he's supposed to be, trying to take God's place instead of allowing God. That's, it, it's kind of a shame in a way that 
man brings everything on himself. But how simple it is for God to bring peace and take away the confusion, Babel, simply by destroying the lawless one, by getting rid of that that is crooked. Breaking the staff means taking away the leadership. And so it is that our Father stays in control. Verse 6. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. None is going to try to stop it. And so it is that our Father stays in control. And so it is our Father is in control. How precious our Father. Verse 7, listen to me. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. That is to say singing thanksgiving. Think about that moment. Think about it a moment. Relish that thought. Think about what has happened in this earth in the last year. The war. The people thinking they're doing what's right when they blow themselves to bits. Assassinations. Wars. Rumors of wars. Connivings. It's all done away. It's gone. And the whole world's at rest. What a difference that will be and what, what a wonderful thing to work forward to. To have that in your mind and your heart. Think about it. All right, bless your hearts. You listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is...